Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with news on the Big Narve from AMD. An entry for this GPU has been spotted to indicate that it is indeed passing certification as we speak. Big Narve, aka Narve 12, is going to be an incredibly important release for Team Red. As we all know, the RX 5700 5700 XT is doing a stellar job competing with NVIDIA's mid-range offerings, but the market is crying out for an alternative to cards such as the RTX 2080 and the RTX 2080 Ti. So to that end, we are waiting for AMD's response. Coincidentally, yesterday I covered a piece of Narve 12 for an exclusive source. I was told the big Narve is definitely going to launch next year, not this year. And given what we're learning now with this certification, it all seems to be tying together rather nicely. There are several questions, of course. Where is this leak from? How credible is it? And what type of time frames are we looking at? Well, let's begin with those questions. The leak is from the National Radio Research Agency, and it is a regulatory body in Korea. They have a very important job in Korea. They ensure that devices which go on sale don't burst into flames, that they're safe to use, and also don't put out uh, dangerous RF interference. So, for example, that they won't interfere with, say, a smartphone or something like that. Basically, lots of different governments around the world have such regulatory bodies, but there is something unique about the RRA. The National Radio Research Agency publishes their certification results on the internet, which is a very different approach than, let's say, how the United States handles things. This means that we've seen several leaks from the RRA in the past, Lots of stuff from AMD and NVIDIA and so on and so on. And we've even seen it with Polaris. We saw it with the smaller Narve card. So obviously the certification doesn't necessarily mean 100% that a product is going to launch. But it's a very good referencing point. And it's certainly a, um, let's say, very good indication so we can discern several things based upon the information we have here. Obviously, it tells us that it's ATI Technologies who is the manufacturer, and the certification date is essentially today. It's 2019-10-28. But as for the string, as for the code name, as for the device ID, whatever you want to call it, we can ascertain a few things from that as well. The code name is ATI102D18802, and that may seem a bit gobbledygook. It may seem just complete and up utterly like they've just like smashed their face across the keyboard uh, and just come up with a random string, but it does actually mean a few things. So D18 is actually a reference to the generation of GPU from AMD. Um, what essentially that means is that D18 means Narve. Vega, for example, had D12. Polaris was C9, and so on, and so on, and so on. So D18 simply is a reference to Narve, and we've seen that prior to this. There is, however, another potential possibility, and that is that this particular entry is not Narve 12, but instead is a card designed around professional usage. So a prosumer card or maybe a workstation card, but based on the Narve 10 architecture. So I was first made aware of the RRA entry thanks to the RRA bot, which basically does what you'd expect given the name. It trawls through the RRA database, and then anything that seems pertinent to GPUs, motherboards, blah, 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 it will tweet them. However, Kamichi on Twitter did make a pretty good point, and that is that Narve 14 is D323, whereas Narve 10 is D18. So while the first numbers do, in general, reference generation, they don't always reference generation because 
From what we understand, Narve 10 and Narve 14 essentially have the same architecture, but Narve 12 does not have the same architecture. I recently released a video speculating what Narve 12 could have in terms of specifications, and also some other stuff as well, like the second generation of RDNA ray tracing plans and other bits and pieces. And one thing I did mention during that video is there's quite a bit of evidence that Narve 12 does have some architectural tweaks. In other words, there are some differences with the architecture. I don't mean the number of uh, stream processors or clock frequencies or any of that jazz. I actually mean the actual specific architecture of the GPU compared to Narve 10. There is some differences there which would imply that that generation, Narve 12, is being designed later, which also makes sense given we know that Narve 12 is facing a delay. Further to this, back in March of this year, I released a video um, where I had a lot of leaks for Narve, and one of those leaks was the fact that the uh, second generation would have ray tracing, plus my source also told me Many other things which, which turned out to be accurate concerning the tweaks and enhancements for the RDNA architecture compared to, let's say, Vega. In that video, I also went through the fact that there would be professional cards coming based on the RDNA architecture, although back then, of course, we only referred to it as Narve. So it's entirely possible that this is not big Narve and instead is a card based on the prosumer market. So it is entirely possible that this card is uh, based upon an architecture designed in the professional market. So whether that's the data center, designed for video editors, whatever else, it is entirely possible that that is a potential usage scenario for this GPU. Also, the date of the certification does not mean that we are going to be seeing this GPU around the corner. It does take a while, even after certification, for the product to materialize onto store shelves. In fact, just recently, uh, it's actually yesterday, I put out a video that one of my sources told me that Narve 12, the big Narve GPU, which, are, well, we can probably uh, assume is going to be this card, is not going to launch until some point next year. I'm hearing it's not going to be the beginning of uh, 2020 exactly, so it's not going to be the first month. So, of course, that does seem to coincide with this. Um, and it's kind of curious as well, given Narve 20 is also supposed to launch next year. It makes you wonder what's going on in terms of the time frame. Just, and this is just an example, are we going to see Narve... 12, let's call it the RX 5900 series, are we going to see that launch in just February, for example? And this is speculation. And then are we going to see Narve 2X launch in, let's say, October or November time? It's going to be fascinating to see how that all plays out. Uh, because another one of my sources, and I spoke about this in a couple of other videos, had told me that Narve 2X had also faced some delays. So, potentially that's what's going on here. Maybe AMD's plans have just gotten jostled around a little bit, uh, because even the original generation of Narve faced delays launching. It was supposed to launch in, like, January or February of this year, 2019, but, of course, ended up getting delayed massively until July. And I've been told through little birdies, and I've spoke about this a couple of times in the past, that the release of Narve, the design and the bring-up phase in particular, because the chip had to go through numerous respins, uh, had been a nightmare. That was literally the words that apparently engineers were using. They were saying that the design of Narve had been a nightmare towards the end. I also really want AMD just to admit that the RX 5500 XT is a thing. As we know, the 5500 only uses 22 compute units versus the full Narvo 14 die, which is, of course, uh, an additional two units on top of that. So for them to admit it and for us to actually to learn the price of the RX 5500, it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD chooses to do with the Polaris-based cards as well. 
I've actually got a couple of emails recently from uh, AMD's PR departments asking uh, for me to remember that they have the RX 590 GPUs, which I still think is a really good set of cards right now. They're undergoing some really hefty price cuts and also bundling in a lot of games. So it's going to be fascinating to see exactly what the performance of those GPUs is going to be versus the RX 5500 and the RX 5500 XT. Now I'm going to move over to a smaller piece of AMD news that I did want to tackle, and it is from the website billybilly.com. I'll plonk a link, of course, to this article in the description of this video. Uh, this is just going to be a really quick one. I'm not going to be going through this super in-depth because I'm just telling you that I highly doubt that this rumor is accurate. Um, we are seeing rumors, essentially, of uh, Ryzen 9 B12, uh, 7, B10, B8, and the power consumption for this is 45 watts. And it is going to be, of course, uh, obviously on the 7NM process, utilizing the Zen 2 architecture. And this, of course, is going to be the uh, uh, Renault architecture. So Renault will be using, from my understanding anyway, still a Vega-based GPU. But anyway, the rumor has it that we will see up to 12 processor cores with these CPUs. And... I have to say that I'm highly doubtful that this is true. I'm highly doubtful that we will see up to 12 CPU cores on just a 45 watt part, and then also plonk the GPU on top of that in terms of power consumption. It's entirely possible we could see an 8 core variant, though I would not be surprised at all if we saw an 8 core variant. But given what we know about, of course, the Zen CCXs and also just the power consumption, the size of the die, blah de blah de blah blah, blah I highly doubt it would uh, work with a 12-core part. And now moving ourselves over to some Intel news, there has been a leaked review of the Intel i9-9900KS. Seems to be the week of leaked Intel reviews, doesn't it? Uh, for those uninitiated in what the heck the 9900KS is, it is the special edition of the 9900K. Basically, what this means is that it's a 9900K, but just with higher clock frequencies. There are also apparently some silicon mitigations on die uh, in terms of security, but... The long and short of it is that it's a 9900K. We don't have any additional CPU cores in it. There is not anything astoundingly different. There's no real difference in instruction sets or anything like that. It is essentially a 9900K, albeit with a cherry-picked silicon and runs at uh, 5 gigahertz uh, across all cores and has a base frequency of 4 gigahertz. So there has been a leak to review of this, and I'm not going to go through all of the benchmarks, but I'm just going to cherry pick a couple of them. This is thanks to pctuning.tiden.cz. And, uh, well, let's start things out with Cinebench R20. They have a couple of different results from the 9900KS. One is with a power limit of 127 watts, the other is 165 watts, and comparing that against the, the 9900K, and it kind of speaks for itself, 165 watts, but the 9900K scores 5,000 points, this scores 5,286 points. With V-Ray, the 9900KS, with a power limit of 127 watts, scores 60, and scores 58 at uh, 165 watts and of course the 9900k vanilla uh, is a little bit slower in both regards obviously lower is better in this particular benchmark and well you can see how well the 9900k and ks do against amd's offerings the 3900x in particular does quite well in this benchmark and even the 3700 and 3800x do comparatively well also. And switching to a couple of gaming benchmarks, I'm assuming these are 1080p, and it looks like they are average FPS, we can once again see that yes, the 9900KS does win RAW over its uh, other cousin, its 9900K cousin, 
but it's not exactly a huge amount, and we can also see much the same story in other benchmarks as well, such as uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood, Wolfenstein Youngblood, uh, the 9900KS scores are 208 points, oh, sorry, frames per second versus 211 frames per second, with a PL of 165, whereas the 9900K with just 95 watts scores 199 FPS and 204 with a PL of 165 watts, of course, respectively. So what conclusions can you come to with the 9900KS? Well... Uh, this CPU has now been officially announced to cost you 518 US dollars, which is, well, kind of a lot of cash. Um, the other factor as well is that according to the information they've got here, the overclocking potential of this CPU isn't particularly much better than a 9900K vanilla. It uh, Basically, it can hit around 5.1-ish uh, comfortably. Potentially, though, if you've got a really good cooler, you might be able to squeeze 5.2, 5.3 out of it. But in general, they reckon around 5.1 uh, across all cores, which isn't that much better, let's just be totally honest, than a 9900K vanilla. That's not to say that the 9900K S is an awful CPU. It just is one of those CPUs that I don't think is going to really change the situation between Intel and AMD. Anyway, I think that just about does it for this particular video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. If you did, of course, leave a like on the video because it helps us out a ton. And also get subscribed to the channel. You can also click the bell icon if you feel like really subscribing because clicking the subscribe button in the land of YouTube, as we know, is not really enough for some reason or another. And you can also find us on social medias, so if you do want to follow us on there, you can find that all linked in the video description. You can also uh, contribute on Patreon if you so desire, you can find a link to that in the description of the video. Any contributions you do make help go towards the channel, for example, review hardware and so on and so on, and of course is greatly appreciated. But with all of that said, I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.